Hello and welcome to more Nerdy Road and Geekery. Today I am doing more text to image generation. Excellent stuff, eh? Yes, it's VQGAN plus Clip. If you've seen any of my recent videos, things about big sleep and deep days, it's very much like that. But we are instead using VQGAN rather than StyleGAN or BigGAN or anything like that. So there's a few example images there. It's a little bit of style transfer that I've been doing. These are generated entirely from prompts and also you can do custom sizes as well so they don't have to be square. Now, if you want to know a little bit more about VQGAN, links down in this description, of course. But there it is, Taming Transformers, all sorts of good stuff on there. So uh, yeah, there's a big list of pre-trained models there. You can have a look at that, have a go with some of those, playing with them. And then if you want to do your own custom data, there's a training on custom data and a data preparation section there. So yeah, lots to run through if you want to make your own models. But today we will just be using the pre-trained ones. Now this started out as a Google Colab notebook. So there it is. Here is the original Colab notebook originally made by Catherine Croson and lots of other people have made changes and modifications and explanations and stuff. So there's a bunch of different models there. You want the settings for that run, so text, width and height model. Make sure it's uh, one that you've actually downloaded. An initial image if you want, a target image, seed, max iterations. Then it goes ahead, generates the image and uh, pumps out a video at the end of the image generation there. So that's that's the Google Colab notebook, but uh, there's, a, there's a few other things you can do with it. Some things that don't exist in the uh, in the Google Colab notebook. So uh, yeah, that's a, a quick look at uh, running this locally and uh, doing some of those funky things. Now, I am using Conda. So uh, I create an Anaconda virtual environment with Conda create minus minus name VQGAN. Yes, yeah, it's, it's a good name. You can put whatever name you like in there. And I am using Python 3.9. Once you've created that environment, don't forget to activate it. So I'll crack open my terminal there and uh, I'm going to activate my Conda environment now so I don't forget. There we go, fantastic. I, of course, already have my code, but uh, you can download it with git clone. So we are uh, VQ again, there we go, right. Now, um, you could sort of pip install everything um, with uh, these two caveats down at the bottom. So there's the pip install command. There is also a uh, requirements.txt as well, which has specific version numbers in. And uh, there's a, a Conda YML file there if you're uh, wanting to use Conda and uh, you can create it <laughs> using that environment file as well. Okay, so the uh, the git clone for clip is mostly because uh, PyTorch 1.7.1 is a requirement for clip and if you do a pip install it will download a previous version of Torch and I want the nice new shiny one. The Taming Transformers, um, I haven't actually got this bit fully working yet. Um, now, if you pip install Taming Transformers, then it works nicely, uh, but the pip version doesn't support Gumball, so you'll get an error when you're using a, a Gumball model. Uh, if, uh, just have a quick look at this download.sh script here. So Gumball there, if you set Gumball to true, that will download this VQGAN Gumball F88192 YAML and checkpoint file. Um, and uh, in the, the, the way I've got it set up by default, Gumball will work, but these uh, Coco Faces HQ and S Flickr unfortunately won't. They will generate an error, which is uh, something I have to try and fix, but not entirely sure how to do it yet. So any ideas on that? Hmm. Yes, but if you do pip install Taming Transformers, then you can use Coco, but you can't use Gumball. So uh, yes, it, install Taming Transformers whichever way you want. Uh, and uh, yeah, if, if anyone has any ideas, like I say, hmm, yeah, hmm. Anyway, <clears throat> so uh, right, you've got, your, you've got your environment set up, you've downloaded one or two of your checkpoints. We'll just have a quick look at the checkpoints directory here. This is a tiny change I've made uh, from the notebook. Basically all the, the checkpoints go in their own little house here in checkpoints. 
So uh, some of these are quite large, as you can see there. Coco is 8.4 gig. Faces HQ is 4 gig, as is S Flickr, but some of them are quite tiny. So that Gumball one is only 376 meg. If you want to download all of them, that comes out to uh, around a whopping 21 gig. So the choice is yours. Download what you like. ImageNet F16 16384 is the default and also my recommendation. That's what all these images were created with. You got them a lump of them air in this samples directory. If you want to have a look through there, it's basically those ones. Right. So um, yeah, there you go. So that's 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 it. You're ready to generate things. OK, so we'll, we'll pop that in there. And uh, we are now generating a painting of an apple in a fruit bowl. Wow. OK, yeah, there we go. No skill. We just need to type things in. And as you can see here, it gives you a little bit of information about which device you're using. There I'm using CUDA Zero, which optimizer is Adam. Text prompts there. Got a little random seed. You can specify a seed if you want. And uh, there it goes generating things. So let's have a look at the output. There is the output. So there's an apple. As you can see, it's not not exactly like the example image there, mostly due to the uh, the random seed each time there. It uh, it will be a little bit different, but as you can say, as you can see even, it's uh, it's fairly similar. Fairly similar. We got a we got a bit of bowlage going on here. And uh, that apple's both red and green and we got some red and green and we seem to have a little pearl in the middle there. I don't, don't entirely know what's going on there, but uh, let's, let's just stop that for now. Uh, by default, that'll run for 500 iterations, and uh, that generally looks pretty good by the end of it. Now, you don't have to just use one prompt. You can use more than one prompt. Just use a little pipe symbol. So there we've got a little example there. Python generator painting of an apple in a fruit bowl, but this time we've got the pipe symbol and psychedelic, surreal, and weird. I'll just pop this one in to show you. Now this does very much the same thing, apart from having, uh, we get the overall loss there, but as you can see, when we're doing it here, you get the four different losses there, as it uh, tries to get close to the, the four different prompts you've got. I'll have a quick look at that output, and there it is, a slightly surreal, psychedelic, weird apple in a fruit bowl. Yeah. So it's, uh, as you can see, again, different seeds. So it's not going to be exactly the same as that. But there's there's a lot of similarities. You can see it's got these wavy lines. That is apparently psychedelic. I don't know which bit in there is weird and surreal. But uh, yeah, anyway, you get the uh, you get the general idea. You get the general idea. So that's, uh, that's multiple prompts with text. You can also do the same thing with images. So let's scroll over here. As you can see, image prompt there and samples and samples there. That's, a, that's another image prompt at the end there. So yep, you can have multiple image prompts, multiple text prompts, but all sorts of things in there. Make it as weird as you like. Now, another sort of trick you can do is this style transfer. Now, uh, this is where you just run a really, really low number of iterations and also use an input image. So that input image is basically how, uh, or initialization image even, that's, that's how the it will start out. So it'll start out with that image uh, and then slowly work towards the, the prompts there. So if we pop this one in. We'll start that one running and we'll open this output. Now, this is also got to save every 10. So you can see how your style is being applied. So you might be all right with 10. Or you might be all right with 20. So depending on uh, on the particular thing that you're doing, uh, you might want more or less style going on. So uh, that's why I've done save every 10. As you can see, it's uh, changing a little bit there. There we go, 80. Similar to that one, very similar to that one. But uh, yeah, there you go. So that's the, the Van Gogh in the style of Picasso. Yeah, you can also do, uh, you know, in the style of a sketch or in a psychedelic art style or, you know, whatever style you want to apply to the uh, initial image there. Um, that's that's what you type in text. So it's sort of style transfer. Um, you could probably throw in uh, an image prompt in there as well, maybe, and uh, get get those two 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 together. So yeah, all, all sorts of uh, options there for style transfer like effects. Now you can also do movies. We saw movies before, but uh, yeah, this is a this is a different movie here. This is a, a zoom movie, as you can see. It's it's all all weird and. Yeah, what's what's going on there? Well, if 
we have a look at this uh, Zoom script. You can see, basically, I'm starting off just uh, generating a random seed at the beginning, keeping that same seed through all the different runs, starting off with generating it just from the text there, and then saving that out as the file name you specify, and then making a little change to it. So zooming in on the image and then rotating it by one degree. You could also rotate it by minus one degree if you wanted, or by half a degree or by two degrees if you wanted to go really quickly. So, you know, you can make little changes to uh, the output image and then feed that image back in again as the initial image, but then also feeding that output image back in again in this loop. So yeah, you get this little feedback effect. So you, you generate an image, you feed that one, change it a little bit, feed that back one, keep going, keep going, keep going and uh, make a video. And uh, then it turns out something like that. So those are pretty cool. Let's have a, a quick look at some of those videos. So uh, here we've got uh, some, some demons emerging from a portal. There we go. Whoa. Whoa. It's all spinny. It's all spinny and zooming in. Or uh, there's a surreal one there. It's spinning the other way. Yeah. Yeah. That's weird, isn't it? Weird. So all sorts of videos that you can make using that. Yeah, that's that's pretty strange. Um, if you just want to make loads and loads and loads of random images, then there's this tiny little script here, random as well. Have a quick look at that. There we go. So um, text one, you probably just want to leave alone unless you can think of any more things in there. This tends to be how you can change um, the way that your image is going to come out the most. Uh, a painting, a uh, pencil art sketch, illustration, photograph, uh, drawing is another one. Um, so yeah, whatever sort of things you can think of at, at the front there, you know, the main big ones being photograph and painting do look very different and, and art sketches may not have, you know, as much color in, there'll be, uh, you could do a charcoal one maybe, things like that. So that's, that's quite a big influence on style as well as the style at the end here. So uh, you've got uh, in the style of, and I pick a couple of those. But uh, yeah, basically, if you just add loads of words to uh, text two and text three, then uh, yeah, so you know, you want your own thing in there, or just have a human, there we go. And uh, yeah, just add as many words as you can in there. It will run through however many times you want. If you want it to run just 10 times, you know, there you go, change that number there, and that will just generate some random text and some random images. So let's have a, a little look at some of those random examples. Scroll down here. Okay, so there's there's one random image. It's a sort of cartoony style. There's a there's another one there. It's like a I don't even know what's going on there. I, I can tell that those are otters and some flowers, but as for what else is going on, yeah, that's that's just really random. Uh, yeah, I think that's a I think I put some sort of implements in there. And that's just weird. Uh, weird and surreal are words I put in there a lot. It's, uh, yeah, some sort of cake ice cream building. And, uh, yeah, so as you can see, you can get some rather strange images just from uh, throwing random words and text at it. Yeah, it's quite, I like these ones, the diagrams, a diagram of. Uh, yeah, I'd forgotten about that one. That one works quite well. There's neon, quite like neon as well. And we've got uh, there some sort of illustration of how to, uh, yeah, how to put this little dot on your head. And uh, yeah, so yeah, that's, it's, it's just, it, it's got an imagination of its own sometimes, isn't it? Yeah, I don't even know what's going on. I mean, what is that? What is that? So yeah, and finally, <laughs> the advanced options there, you can just do minus H and uh, that will print out the help and show you all the different bits and pieces there. So there's a few extra things that you can change. Well, there you go. So all sorts of fun to be had with that. Generating images just from text, from Im other images as well, doing a bit of style transfer and fully AI powered animated movies. Whoa. Anyway, there you go. VQGAN plus clip. Loads of fun. Nerdy Rodent out for now.